Well, the first thing is, this is kind of a reoccurring theme, is she's never used her staff more. It's a lot of her moves now use the staff. She does a lot of moves where she uses the staff along with punching and kicking. She uses it. She also uses her glaive more in a lot of her animations. You can see in her throws. Yeah, I wanted to make sure all of her weapons kind of came through, right? Like. She's got. She's had these things for decades now. Right, right? and you'd, you'd often see her use them in like two different moves. And right. as I break this game down, the, the more I would play it over the last year, it always struck me the range of the characters is really strong because of their weapons. And it, it kind of occurred to me, this is essentially a weapons fighting game in, in some ways with a yeah. lot of characters. Like, it's way more of a ranged game than we've previously seen in MK. Like, you can see her down too is awesome. It's one of my favorites to use in the game. It did. It definitely uh, covers a lot of cool. Yeah, it's a very, very <laughs> good move. So I'll go over just a few of her normals that I think are core. I think her back two. The wiggle stick. Yeah, the wiggly stick <laughs> is extremely fast, multiple hits, really easy to, you see it, hit confirm it into a special move. Good damage. It's an awesome whiff punisher. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's definitely there to keep keep the distance, right? Exactly. Like, I have this much space at all times. When she's hovering around this range, if you think you're going to hit a button or with an attack, you're in a lot of trouble. Yep. It is a high, so if they do like a down four under it or they can duck it, it's going to whiff, but it's awesome for controlling this upper level, like, chest area space. There's some really incredible stuff just with how the staff moves. Like, the animators, like, just a lot of the, the moves that the staff make, the little just micro moves are I, so visible and cool. Shoutouts too to the audio team. I love the clank, clank, clank the staff moves me. Mm. So another one I wanted to show is her forward two, which is a big long range overhead. This is actually relatively slow. It's over 20 frames. And I, I think if you're really looking for it, you can see it. But if you're not ready, if you're, you're crouch blocking for other reasons, you know, you think she's going to down four or whatever, she can hit you with it. Yep. She's not going to get a pop up. She's going to have to just do the full string or she's going to have to just commit to doing the shadow kick. But it's a pretty good overhead with a lot of range. And I think it kind of complements what you were saying about her back too. Right. Like a lot of times I'll kind of hover around this range. They're looking for this. They're focused on that. And she can just kind of dash up and throw or do a jump in. And it's, it's kind of a move that keeps you thinking at all times. She's like a mid-screen character. Exactly. Yep. Another one that complements that is her 4-3, which is one of her kick strings. It's this full thing. Now this is a great low. She can actually hit confirm it and go into a special move. If she sees that it's blocked, she can stay safe and not finish it. If she thinks they're going to try to interrupt, she can complete the string. That heavily complements her forward too, and it's significantly faster. It's just an overall great low attack. So if they're sitting there hyper-focused on this, they also have to worry about this. And again, that sets up jumping back, yep. walking back and zoning, doing a jump in. She really controls like that start of the range space really really well yep and one more move i want to look at is her back three and this is her key mid it's pretty fast she can hit confirm it again into her special moves she can just continue the string and be safe and it's the mid you'll use if they're ducking a lot right like if you're using this and sub-zero won't stop uppercutting you out of it <laughs> you can walk up and it's really good range and then that's going to open up again your throws your zoning whatever you kind of want to do rest of her tools exactly so, I mean, we've kind of talked a little bit about it. So her archetype as a character would be, how would you put it? I would say she controls space, and that lets her play her game, which is very versatile based on what she wants to do. She's got some good zoning, decent mix-ups, some good block pressure. She can, and you'll see some interesting special moves. So I would say space control leading to her then kind of playing her game, which is now, tailored to your variation. How do you play your game? Well, that's getting into special moves and kind of show some of them. So... You always want to bring back the core moves when you think of Jaden. So the shadow kick's one of them. Yep. It's it's exactly what you'd expect from a shadow kick. It's a high, but it's very fast. It has a, a second hit. Yeah, it's a great whiff punisher, a great sh Sometimes I'll just be walking back, and if the opponent, I think he's going to do an ice ball or something, I'll just preemptively do it, and I'll take the risk. Right. And he might he might punish me, and, and that that's a bummer, but I'll take the risk. <laughs> it's a bummer. Yeah, and then uh, her glaives are back, but they're done a little different. You kind of took the spirit of the glaive, but they're now a slow-moving projectile with a lot of wind-up, but you can see they cover a ton of space, and that makes them awesome if you think the opponent is going to jump in, like they'll get hit by the tail of it, right? or if you think they're trying to walk in. So it's not like a projectile you spam, it complements her space control. Like, you kind of do it just to say, no, no, the mid-screen is mine, stay back, right. don't move. 
And then if they try to jump it and they're going to jump early because it has such a long tail, that's what your down four is for. So in my opinion, her zoning with the glaive is really kind of to slow the pace of the match down, to then walk into the mid-range to do all the stuff we talked about. Right. You know, one thing we don't talk about a lot, which I think is really important, is uh, props in the game, right? Like, like first, hit, first props? hit props or like weapons? First oh, hit props. not first hit props. Okay. Weapons and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of the characters who are in Mortal Kombat are <laughs> iconic, not because of just their character, because of what they carry. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, the the glaive is just, and the, the staff, very important things. And, uh, you know, big ups to the to the, the team that makes the props for, you know, helping create the character and make it even, have it even more depth because of how cool the props are and the amount of props they have to make. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, there's one for Jade that it's kind of similar to a fan, which is like MK2 when she was a Katana palette swap. There's some that have like glowing energy. There's curved ones. There's straight ones. Like there's a million different glades. But all there's these like things put together. MK3 ones. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All these things put together, they still have to match her personality. They can't yes. be like she can't throw a radio match. Well, I mean, she could. She, she could. She could. She could. It would probably break some of the mythology. They probably don't have radio technology in Outworld. I never thought about that. But right. you are you are the lore master, so let's hmm. keep going. The all last right. classic move would be her glow is back. She's fully projectile immune has this snazzy purple effect, and any projectile is going to go through while it's active. So Classic. While she can slow the pace down with her zoning, it's hard to zone her because she's going to have this on. Right, and then she just gets in right on you. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And her last base move is this parry, which has the coolest <laughs> into I've ever seen in my life. Like, for the most part, I'm just going to do that to people online. Like, that's all I care about. And she can amplify it into this awesome... I absolutely love the way she recovers how that next snap. Look at that. I'm marking out. The way so, <laughs> the way her the way her arms kind of just go to the side when she's done. Oh yeah, is super. Just like it's, I've never seen a more awesome looking nonchalant neck yes. break. Yes, it's effortless. True yeah. story. I actually accidentally hit Aaron using a Japanese like wall scroll rolled up and pretending to do one of her normals. I accidentally hit him in the QA lab. <laughs> well, it's. So let's go over some of the loadout moves I gave her. Right. I started with my personal one I like to use, which is a zoning variation. Yeah. And I know you like these ones too. So I she has an upgrade. And if she meter burns it, it's great. She, uh, sorry, amplifies. She gets a second one. Right. This move dominates the air. Yes. If you want to jump, if you you're, can't. You, yeah, <laughs> you are in a lot of trouble. And they, it's they stay up there for a while too, right? So I mean, oh, it's yeah. like you're, you're being pushed down for and quite some time. She's not controlling them, so no. she's free to do these. And they, the arc is automatic, and then. If you're hit, you can see you get a big hick reaction. You can go for shadow kick and stuff like that. Yep. I love this move. She also has an air glaive that goes straight down, and that's a double one. You can use this to fake out jump ins, to jump back, and if they whiff a normal, you do it. It's to stay in the air longer. Yeah, exactly. To go over ground pounds or whatever. Yep. And then the last move in this I also really like is a extremely quick low projectile. The Adenian Spock. Yeah, this is a brand new move, and I think it's great, again, for space control. If, especially if you have them looking for the overhead, and they're hyper-focused, and they're afraid of it, you can just do this to get, knock them down for a little bit, chip damage. You're literally controlling every aspect of the fight when you have this setup. Yeah. Like, you can go low, you can go up, like, you're controlling everything. Stream chat was confused, uh, Aaron, Aaron Davis from yes. QA. Yes, yes. Mm. Not yeah. another Aaron, yeah, yeah. Dizzy, <laughs> ex-tournament player Dizzy. That was, I actually hit him as revenge for all those MK9 losses. Mm. You'll get over it someday, sir. One other move would be her staff spin. I forgot about that. Yeah. This is just a great combo winner. Um, in, in the corner, you actually get a combo. Normally, she's not really a combo character. For all her space control, she really isn't opening up with these huge combos. She right. just kind of ends in a special move. But in the corner, because of that staff spin, she can. Right. Like a lot of times when I have someone in the corner, I'll mix up her overhead or her low and go into throws and they're looking for it, and she'll actually get that 30% combo. So the staff spin's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I, I just like it for the additional damage, right? Like you just add that to almost yeah, everything. It's, <laughs> it's, there, it's no reason not to do it. And it also has amazing audio and looks cool. Yeah, absolutely. Before we keep going, uh, let's talk real quick. Uh, what do you do against Jade? The main thing against Jade would be don't freak out. Walk your way in, pick your opportunity. If you think she's going to lose the low spark, you get a free jump in. And while right. you're going to eat it down too, it's not the end of the world. 